What are you guys doing here? What am I doing here? Well, I came out to just practice hooking up the three-point attachments. That's not crazy. You guys don't do that in your spare time? Huh. Well, since you're here, you want me to show you some tips? All right, let's get into it. All right, I apologize. I think quarantine has me going a little crazy, but I do want to show you some tips on how to hook up attachments to your three-point hitch. And maybe we'll get one or two in there on the PTO as well, but uh, should be a good overview. And as I usually do, I learn some things simply by looking in the manual a little bit harder than I normally do. So, you know, let's go ahead and go through this. We'll give you a good lay of the land here on how to have everything set up properly, at least my interpretation of it. You know, your mileage may vary, as they say, but I want to give you some advice here because it could make your life a lot easier. I absolutely used to hate hooking up to three-point attachments, but it's pretty much a piece of cake anymore. So I've got several tractors here and that's intentional. You know, I want to give you some different setups here, some different versions that you can see because all the tractors are different out there. And this doesn't clearly represent everything that's going to be on the market, but it gives you a good idea and a good basic understanding. So we do have a 4066R right here, going to have a 3039R right here, and then a 2032R uh, as well over there. And you can't see it in this uh, footprint right here, but I do have my 1025R as well. We might get that into the mix also. I've talked about this rate of drop or speed of drop control before, which is essentially opening and closing a valve that's going to be tied into your three-point hitch or your rock shaft control system. And looking in the manual, surprisingly, it, it, it's underneath the section of attaching and detaching your three-point hitch operation, all that kind of thing. Surprisingly, it says you want to set this so that it takes two seconds to lower to the ground. Um, otherwise, you could, you know, potentially damage or injure or whatever else, you know. So, uh, good note there, two, in, or two seconds to get all the way down to the ground from a fully raised position. That means it's going to have to be almost completely closed, um, maybe just a hair backed off from that, but I'll show you what I mean. So, I've got this valve completely closed right now, and I'm going to back it off just a little bit, and we'll see how long it takes to lower. Uh, what was that, like three seconds, three and a half seconds? Open it a little more. That's about two seconds right there. Okay, so while we're out here looking at the 1025R, I want to take a quick second and show you how to make attaching to this PTO shaft that much easier. So if you have a machine that's equipped with both a mid and a rear PTO, what I want you to do is go ahead and take your PTO lever here, okay? This is your PTO select lever. It's going to control which PTO you're operating, whether it's the rear, the mid, or both at the same time. So I've gone ahead and moved my PTO select shaft to the rear PTO, all right? And so that means that if I had this machine on and pulled out the, the knob for the PTO or flipped a button, that the rear PTO would be spinning and engaged, okay? Say I had a tiller or a brush hog attached. So if I come back here and try to spin this PTO shaft, it's not going to spin. You can hear it kind of rattling as it's locked in place there. So now if I move this PTO lever to the mid PTO position, okay, so only the mid PTO is running and it would not be the rear PTO if I had the machine on. Let's go ahead and see what happens. See how it freely spins? So if I move this back to the, to the rear, there we go, it's going to be locked in place. If I move it back to the mid, it's going to freely move. And that will help you align your splines that are on your PTO shaft uh, with the splines that are on here on the output shaft on the tractor. Hey, and as we go through this video today, keep your eyes on these quick hitches here because I'll get to it later in the video, but if you think that this sounds like a major chore, attaching, detaching from the three-point hitch, then you might find that a quick hitch is what you need. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button below right there underneath the video. Hit subscribe, make sure you read the description, a lot of links, a lot of good information down there as well. Go to goodworkstractors.com too. Would love to help you with a tractor and attachment, delivery and financing as well. You know, to set your tractor up right on your three-point hitch, it's actually a little bit more involved than you might think. And if you've ever wondered why there's three positions up here, well, so did I. So finally, what do you know? I looked into it a little bit further and these three different positions totally mean something, okay? There's a reason for those. So let's go through it. So before we actually hook up to the three-point hitch, it's important to know which pin position you should put your top link, okay? Your center link right here. And these all mean something different, these three different locations. Now, not every tractor has three locations, but for those that do, there's a reason for it. I have to break out the manual to show you. Let's take a quick peek. 
Okay, this is a John Deere 2032R 2038 manual. We are opening to our positioning center links, links section right here. And you're gonna see for light and medium loads, install center link and the bottom hole B, okay, down here. Medium and heavy loads, C, okay, the middle one. For very heavy draft loads, D, the top one, okay. Also notice you're gonna see a category one implement. Oh, hey there, Mr. Fly. Uh, tilts forward while raising in this position. Uh, category one implement tilts forward very s slightly while raised in this position and category one raises, but angle remains constant. Okay. So important note there, depending on the tool that you're using, I can't believe that fly is just doing what he wants. Oh, I get distracted too easy. Anyway, pay attention to that. Cause that can mean something could mean a difference to, to, uh, the implement that you're using and hooking up to your three point hitch. Okay. So the first thing that you need to do is going to be to put your tractor in park turn that sucker off for the initial hookup, okay? So we may need to turn the machine on at a, at a certain point in time here, but get your tractor off, get it in park, in neutral, that kind of thing. So safety first is always. I wanna make sure that's uh, above and beyond everything else that we do. Next thing after that, you're gonna see, I am on a completely level section of ground here. You know, that's gonna make your life so much easier. You know, there was a point in time when I had a lot of attachments stored in my backyard and it has just a slight slope, you know? It's, it's not significant, it's enough to notice, but it's nothing crazy. And I always used to park attachments in the back edge of my lawn, on my yard there, along that slope. And it was just a nightmare to constantly hook those things up and detach them and everything else, and I just absolutely hated it. So if you can park on a piece of level ground, your attachments, it's gonna make life so much easier. Next thing you're gonna see, I do have all of my attachments typically gonna be stored on a pallet. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, you know, you can move them around easier if you need to move them from point A to point B. If they're already on a pallet and set up and ready to go, it's a lot easier that way. Two, it gets that attachment a little bit higher off the ground. It's not fun, you know, the older you get, the, the less you wanna be bent down, hunkered over and everything else. So, you know, even the four or five inches that you see here makes a big difference. The other reason that I find a pallet useful is because on a machine like my 4066R, the three-point hitch doesn't always drop down far enough to allow like the quick hitch, for instance, here to release from underneath these pins. And so if I have it elevated a little bit higher, it makes that process a lot easier. So there's several reasons there to use pallets or something else to raise up your attachments. It's also nice just to keep them off the ground from moisture, corrosion, that kind of thing as well. You know, so it's much easier to focus on one point rather than trying to focus here and here and here, all three points, you know? So the biggest thing that I try to do when I'm backing up to an implement is lining up the center link with the top uh, pin position here on the three point hitch. Don't worry so much about the sides down here. As long as you feel like you're pretty square, it's gonna come out all right and you'll be able to have enough adjustment there typically, or you can get on the tractor and slightly go back further or forward after you have one pin attached. Focus on this center link, getting it lined up here in the middle because that way you know your spacing is correct and your top link is correct as well. Typically what I like to do is start out with my three point hitch as low as possible and then I'll raise it on up from there. So let's go ahead and get that done now. And this is something you can do with the tractor off in the park position. So if it's not in the lowest position right now, you can just go ahead and move that rock shaft lever all the way down and it'll naturally do its thing. If there's nothing on the three point arms, for example, then you might just need to give it a little bit of a push in order to encourage it to go down, but it will go down, okay? I should probably open up this rate of drop a little bit more. <laughs> Now, if you're lucky enough to have a model of tractor that has this style of sway arm down here, okay, with just a pin where you can pull it out and position it in different areas, now is the time that I would say to release those. Do it on this side as well. See how much flexibility that gives you? The other style is going to be this turnbuckle style of sway arm down here as well. Typically, once they're set up, there's not going to be a whole lot of adjustment that's required, but there is a, a tightening nut on here or sometimes a, um, a pin that goes through to hold this little center link in place. You undo that and then you can loosen it up and it'll shorten this gap here or lengthen it out to give you um, more adjustment that way. So at this point here, I'm just going to go ahead and back up to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach these lower links first. And so as I'm backing up, you can see, you can pick up on on the uh, the arms here okay and so i'm going to keep them just slightly lower than what the elevation is here and then once i get back here i'm going to attach the lower link first whatever one appears to be 
um, is slightly lower. I know it's level ground, but there's still going to be one that's probably not perfectly level, you know? So I'm going to put the lower one on first, and then if I need to, I can lift up. I can turn the machine on, lift up just slightly, and get the other side link to match up and, and slide over the pin. So you can see at this point, we're just about there, all right? And uh, with an attachment that's a little bit lighter like this, you can actually just kind of scoot it forward a little bit, you know, and get it into place there. If you needed to, you could actually just have it go right underneath those pins completely, and then you can pull out to the side. You see how they're gonna go out to the side a little bit and give yourself some more room that way. So what I'm gonna do in this situation is just scoot it slightly forward here, get these pins off of here, throw them over there. And now let's lift up. You can see how I'm just lifting up, just like that. And we'll just give it a little jiggle, and it's on. So to make the connection over on this second lower pin over here, I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine on just a little bit and raise it up so that way this arm is raising a touch to slide over here easier. And I'm guessing that's all that's going to be needed. Give it a little jiggle like that. And I have this here just in case because feel free, you know, if you just need a, a centimeter more or whatever else, give it a little whack like that. And that's no problem at all. Put that lower link there. Now we're onto the top link here. So with the top link here, you're going to see it is adjustable. It's got this locking uh, or jam nut on here too. So if it is tightened down, you're not going to be able to uh, lengthen out this side once it's attached, but you can loosen that up too, and then uh, we'll get this attached. And you'll see that sometimes if these don't have any grease on them, <coughs> they're a little stiff. Okay, so you have two ways that you can level this uh, three-point attachment out, okay? So first is you're going to have your top link that will level this way, okay? Or pitch if you want something to, you know, to get a more aggressive dig or line if you want, or to have it ride a little bit more smoothly and evenly all the way across. So depends on the attachment that you have and how you want it set up, but giving that angle or levelness forward to backwards is going to be with the top link here. Now what gives you level side to side, okay, this way and this way, is going to be with these two arms here and not so much with this arm over here but you are going to have an adjustment right here on this arm and so in the same way that you can adjust the top link you know you can put your set of channel locks or whatever else on here and you can rotate this and adjust it along this threaded rod here to uh, either level it out if you want or if you want to say you're grading with a um, with a back blade or a box blade or something else and you want one side to dig in more for instance you can offset it that way to allow for that to happen so what you will see on some fancier setups like this one here are going to be a little bit of an easier adjustment that you can make uh, with this contraption right here, whatever you want to call it. So, but um, a little bit easier that way to do, and you can just slot it right back down in there and make that adjustment a little bit easier. But let me show you an even easier way yet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is definitely as easy as you can get it, all right? And so this is also the most expensive way, there's no doubt about it. But it is pretty cool, so I wanted to show it to you. You know, there's a, there's a lot of money that's tied up in something like this setup here because you need to have two functions, okay, like a fourth and a fifth remote right here dedicated to, to operating the setup. In addition to that, you have to buy, you know, your hydraulic top link here and your hydraulic side link over here. So instead of having to mess with the monkeying around, you know, manually threading the rods in and out and trying to get a level and everything else, you can simply, after you have this whole system set up, you know, use a couple levers right from your operator station and make those adjustments on the fly or if you need to, if you're detaching from one and then going up to hook up to another one, even on those uneven surfaces because you can just simply angle your, your um, quick hitch here or your three-point hitch this way, for instance, and then hook up to it, level it out, and away you go. Now, the other really cool feature found on the 4R series and I think some larger series as well is called Hitch Assist. 
And with this knob right here, I can raise and lower the three point hitch from right back here off the operator seat. And with these functions right here, I can actually move the tractor slowly forward or backwards to um, just allow it to slowly creep backwards and hook up or slowly go forwards and hook up that way with or without a quick hitch. Doesn't matter if it's just the, the three point arms itself or a quick hitch, either way. I have done an entire video on this system and how to operate it. I'll post a link above, but I don't want to spend too much time going through the ins and outs of it right now. You know, so if you think that hooking up to a three point hitch is a real pain in the butt, <laughs> then you're not alone. And that's why these quick hitches have become so popular with everybody. You can't actually do any work with it, but it takes so much of the frustration and the, just the horribleness about hooking up to a, a three point attachment out of that process. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you really quick here how to put one of these on. Once it's on, it's on, right? So it's good for any attachment. You just hook and unhook as needed, and it's just a lot simpler process. I can sell one of these to you as well. I can even ship them for a really reasonable rate. So go ahead and get a hold of me. Go to goodworkstractors.com and check them out. They're going to come with three pins here. All the hardware you need to hook them up. And these quick hitches are built to a standard ASAE specification, which is just a, a dimensional spacing requirement for quick hitches and for quick hitch compatible attachments. It can make it easier uh, for some of the heavier ones, like this is a pretty heavy quick hitch here, you know, if you want to have a, a, another person helping you out. But otherwise, once you get it on there, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of managing it all by yourself. top link in here and boom there you go you do have adjustments here for the top hook okay so you can see the different positions you can raise it up and down if you need to in there you know these are just um, spring loaded on the arms here again you do need a set of bushings for every attachment that you put uh, that you plan to hook up to your quick hitch here but really sweet piece of equipment here again you can't do any work with it specifically but Man, it makes work more efficient and more enjoyable. So really quick, just go over how to hook up a three-point hitch attachment or the rear shaft of a three-point hitch attachment to your rear PTO. You can see there's the splines in there, okay? And these simply, it's just like a key. It's just gotta fit right with the splines that are on the back of your tractor, the output shaft there for the rear PTO. And so typically what you need to do after you get to a certain point, you're gonna have a little button like this, or you're gonna have a collar to pull back, okay? It's gonna help it seat on there and then lock into place so it doesn't fly off while you're actually using the implement. You'll be able to get the shaft on part way, but then before you get it the whole way, you're gonna to have to hit that button there, or again, pull the collar back to get it to go all the way on, and then pull back a little bit, get it to seat, you'll be good to go. So this is gonna be the collar style. Instead of that little push button, you just have a collar to pull back on. And so same thing when you're releasing the PTO shaft, when you wanna take it off the tractor, you gotta either pull back on that collar or you have to push on that button and then pull back at the same time, okay? Same concept for a mid PTO as well for you folks with mower decks. So I'm a pretty realistic guy. I know that a hydraulic top and tilt kit and this whole setup here is just not gonna happen for most of us. You know, it's just a cool thing. It's, it's the cat's meow, you know, the creme de la creme, the kind of the best setup you can get for that. The worst setup is your traditional three point hitch, right? So a good middle ground there and actually a pretty reasonable price point is gonna be that quick hitch there. If that's the route you wanna go, I can definitely help you out with it. Again, go to goodworkstractors.com. I can ship them to you. Um, if you're not too far away, you know, seven, eight, 900 miles, I can ship them really cheap and not a whole lot more, even a little bit further than that. So don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to help you out with one of those, another attachment as well. But 
If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button below, right down below there. Make sure you check out all those links. Head on over to the Amazon store, go to goodworkstractors.com. Stay safe, we'll see you soon.